the developer out there who might have just launched their app or is getting no download, what should our ASO strategy be? A lot of people ask me what is App Store optimization, and I say it's a way to tell Apple and Google what your app does because they have no idea. It's not manipulating the algorithm. But how do you do that for apps with zero of that new downloads, a thousand new downloads, a million new downloads, all of them? need to tell the algorithm what the apps do because at the end of the day you want to appear in search results if you think about it apple and google spend so much money so much effort driving people into the app store apple used to have this figure of 80 something percent on their site of traffic of downloads coming from search so you use aso to tell the app stores what your app does and then they rank you in search results downloads don't actually lead to better aso to better ranks because it's all about where and how you use keywords because again we're telling the algorithm what it should know about your app or game and then we're also using ratings as the currency more ratings is more better for the algorithm let's talk about no downloads the idea behind no downloads is is kind of simple so if you need keywords to be included in search results that you can do without any downloads. You don't need any sort of ratings, any sort of downloads to be just considered to be ranked. The only problem is without downloads, you're not gonna get ratings and without ratings, you're not gonna get up high in the search results. So what you'll do, if you can't do that, you gotta reverse that. You gotta aim low. <laughs> That's really where you begin and you, you gotta build up that momentum. So if you think about it, ratings, or if we talk about it, ratings are the currency. So if you did your keyword research correctly and you did your keyword optimization correctly, meaning you found the keywords where you can compete that are relevant and are as popular as you can actually get. And then you use them properly in the name and the subtitle and the keyword list and the short description. You optimize your long description on Google Play and you use tools and you did it with actual data. Then you should be well positioned. And now all you really need to do is you need to start small and grow from there. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is that developers just aim so high for the most popular keyword competing with Instagram, for example. You're just never going to win that way. Starting low is, is not, there's no number for what is low. It really depends on your competition, on the keywords you're going after. How do you approach this on, uh, on your end? I like to start with at least 30 search score traffic. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of break it down with the keyword inspector that you have here. Meditation. Yeah, you know, what I try to do with this, with meditation, and look, I'm on, I should... If you subscribe to it, you'll see the popularity score, but you'll see that like 60, it's like super high. Mm -hmm. And so I like to go a little bit deeper and then, or like lower in the funnel and think about like deep breathing or pace breathing because number start low with opponent of it's a lot less crowded in that space because mm -hmm. the big guys are all going after the keyword anyway. Yeah, exactly. So this is Keyword Inspector and in App Figures, and that's actually one of my favorite tools because it gives you everything you need to know in a really easy way to see it and very, very quickly too. So if you look at Meditation, you can see the keyword, you can see the um, the popularity mm -hmm. score, but it also shows you the actual results and it shows you their new ratings. And you're not gonna see new ratings anywhere else, not on the App Store or really anywhere else mm -hmm. because the most important thing for Apple in this example is to show you the overall ratings. A million ratings is great, but the ASO, for ASO purposes, the algorithm actually looks at the last 30-ish days. So you're not going to see that on the App Store. They have no incentive to show you that, but you need to see that. And that's where you see in Keyword Inspector. So I use it all the time for my keyword teardowns and really for everything else. When you said low still, like, was there anything else we should be focused on if we have no downloads? Is it just, should we try to run some Apple search ads or should we do anything else beyond like going after these low competitions. We have it in our title and subtitle, but what else should we be doing, Ariel? There's more that you can do on the organic side, but yes, to App Store, to Apple search ads, and I saw that in the chat as well. So let's talk about what it means to find keyword opportunities. The way I see them, at least, are keywords that are the algorithm decided to, to rank some apps that don't have the keywords in their name because they probably, there aren't that many apps that target that keyword. But the search volume or the popularity score is high-ish. And Steve, you said 30. I really like 30. I think it's a good number. If you can't find a 30 in the keywords that you're targeting, aim a little lower, that's still okay. But if you find a 35 or a 36 or a 37, and that's not a linear scale, so a 37 is more than two better than a 35. So you want to aim just as high as possible where the apps are not targeting the keyword in their name. You can target it using your name, and you will actually do considerably, considerably better. So even if you have two ratings, maybe not two, maybe 20, but the top mm -hmm. results have a thousand, you still have the potential of ranking in the top five for a keyword 
if you are actually using it better than the competition. That's a small trick. Not many people talk about it. And I think a lot of people don't think about how important it is to use the name for keywords, which is mind boggling in 2023. I just wanted to give an example, like deep breathing as the example. I don't think it has that much traffic, okay? But I'm just using yeah. it as an example. So you're saying like deep breathing as an example, you can see the top five results are not using deep breathing. So this gives us an opportunity, if this was a small keyword we want to go after, to go after that keyword and use it in our app title. The idea is you find a keyword that someone else decided is not important enough for them, but it's still getting a ton of searches. BBC actually, they were on my live show a few, maybe a year ago or so, and they were telling me how they found a keyword that their competitors were using that they weren't using, but not because they couldn't, not because it was too popular or anything like that. It's because they just didn't think about it, like a twist on a thing that their app does. I think it was a game. And they said as soon as they used it, they saw an immediate increase in ranks and only because they didn't think about using it. But then they saw it in the tool. They saw it in the competitor keywords report, another tool that we have in app figures for app store optimization. It's one of those things where you can't always think about all of the keywords because people have just infinite creativity and infinite intuition when it comes to how to search on the app store. So that's why this works so well. Now, there aren't that many keyword opportunities, so it's possible that for your niche, if you're doing something very specific, you won't find them. Mm -hmm. But I've been able to find keyword opportunities almost in every type of app that I've, I've looked at or helped or worked with over the last few years. And I write about it all on Keyword Teardown. So it's definitely possible. Where do you like to go? So you, I know you said your keyword inspector is one of your favorite tool. I'm a yeah. lock now. Is there any way where you try to like your favorite tool on app figures to find yeah. these keyword opportunities? So let me show you, uh, yeah, what do we please. got? Let's, uh, let's go back to meditation. Okay. The keyword meditation in keyword inspector, and then that highlights it in the list. So you can see which apps are using which words. It's actually really cool. You can see the competitiveness is really high. I like you're like, don't even go for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's meditation. <laughs> Apple made an app for almost this. They made an app for journaling, which I think is very close to what this is going to be. So yeah. Right. So now on the right hand side, you'll see a view in, and then if you, or compare in just above the table on the right hand side. Oh, compare to, yep. Yeah. And then go into keyword, into competitor keywords. Right here, compare yeah. compare keywords. What's happening here is now we're taking the top five results from Keyword Inspector that we just saw, and we're throwing it into a lookup that will give us all the keywords from all of those apps together. Mm. And what we can do here, there we go, is here I like to find keyword gaps. So imagine if I'm one of the apps in this list, and if I'm not, I can add my app very quickly. The, what we just did was a shortcut. Right. I can now find all the keywords that my competitors are ranking in that I'm not ranking in. And so if... It's possible that maybe a competitor came up with a much, they just did a lot of research and found a clever and novel way to find their app. I can now take it and you can do that. You can sort and you can filter. There are filters up top so you can filter for, let's say, popularity of 30 plus. And then from here, you can go back to Keyword Inspector, check out yeah. the actual other results, see if you can maybe sneak in, see yep. if they're optimizing with the keyword in their name. And if all of that is really sexy go for it and that's how you win with a with a, a brand new app or an app that hasn't had enough traction it's it's a lot of work but when i say a lot of work i mean like an hour i don't yeah. mean like six weeks you just got to know how to use the tools a little bit and once you use them that's it you're in business what you would do from here is you'd actually track all the keywords that you like that's mm -hmm. what i do that's yeah, my process right. mm -hmm. and that would put them into the keyword performance report and then you can see all the trends especially if your app is ranked for them and then after that, you can optimize for it, meaning put it in the name, hopefully the name, or if you need to, the subtitle and the keyword list, push out that update, and then those trends will update. And hopefully you're doing a good job and just through the roof. And you'll get an email when that stuff happens. I like it. I know a past guest of mine, Rooted, Anya, was talking about how she went after panic attack and she ranks really well for panic attack. And she said, look, it was that same strategy we talked about. Hey, going after a smaller keyword, but that's less difficult. Only 136 apps show up for it, but it's mm -hmm. very targeted. And what I found, Ariel, too, is, you know, obviously meditation, mindfulness, all around the panic attack. But if somebody's having a panic attack, they're very likely to subscribe anyways. Mm -hmm. So the deeper down yeah. the funnel that you go from a keyword perspective, we started with meditation, but panic attack is in here. The lower you go, the smaller the keyword, the more, the higher the intent as well. Yeah. And I think it's a great starting point for beginning developers. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that just keyword optimization alone is enough these days? Yes and no and maybe. So the, the yes is, I think if you take the time and you actually do it and you you have realistic expectations, you don't expect overnight to be a success um, and you give it you know a few weeks, a few months, then you will do okay. 
but it also isn't. And that's where it's critical to understand who your audience is. What do they want? How many other competitors do you have in that space? Are they well known? Are they not? Are they nameless? And it's just a matter of whoever shows up in search results or are there very existing, very known popular brands? And all those make it a little bit more difficult because if you're competing with a game, for example, there are a lot of games that are brandless. So the first one that comes up in search results, uh, Solitaire, for example, mm -hmm. you'll pick the first one. They all kind of look the same. They have the same colors for the icon. There's not really a lot of variety. And the variety that they do have within the game, you're not going to see until after you download it. So the decision to download is not really based on any of the real features when it's something like Solitaire. It just, it's too basic. So for those, you really just need to show up first in search results. They're also extremely well optimized because of that. So that's going to make it a little bit more difficult to find those keyword opportunities. And that's where you would want to go and you want to build that ratings performance because ratings are the currency to App Store optimization, especially on the App Store. Google Play is a lot more sophisticated, but on the App Store, that's all you need to do in order to rank up. And I show that in my newsletter almost every week. Now, this but, is great, dude. Is this the SMA downloads for, okay, for the entire app? I love how you just app, have yeah. everything in one spot you know a lot of That's times idea. we're going back and forth different things like oh in certain tools won't show you all this data but you're like yo here's our estimated downloads here's the ad networks so mm -hmm. you can see that this app the second solitaire app is getting about fifty three thousand downloads but not to according to app figures no paid ads going on and then mm -hmm. you can see the new ratings and all this other stuff to yeah. release seven years ago. I love that. And this is, I've been cool. working with this for so long, just doing app store optimization for so long. That's exactly what I want to yeah. see. So that's why it's there. Yeah. But there's a column yeah. there, the DPR. And the DPR is a, it's a brand new column that we added not too long ago. Super useful. So I started talking about ratings. And when it comes to ratings, you can't really, you shouldn't buy ratings, obviously. That should never be a thing because you'll get penalized for it potentially. You're all honest, I know that. So we'll talk about how do you raise, how do you grow ratings on your own? And that is a direct transfer from downloads to ratings. It's all about when you ask and how you ask. And that is a whole new type of, a whole thing. We can do a whole live stream on it. Realistically, as long as you do that, that transfer, that ratio between downloads and ratings, that's kind of like your power. What is your multiplier? Mm -hmm. And if you know your multiplier, you can track it over time and if you're optimizing ratings, you can see that you're doing better. But putting that aside, if you're comparing yourself to competitors, you can tell what one download will mean for you versus one download will mean for them. So if we're going into that second stage of should we do Apple search ads? That's the question mm. everyone is asking me. And the answer is, if you can afford it, sure. Why not? The idea there is everything is getting more expensive. And I did a live stream on this explaining how to do it without breaking the bank. But by default, when you just create your first Apple search ads campaign, you're going to break the bank. Apple gives you all the settings that will just drain your bank account. And all the defaults are just bad. They will give you the least amount of downloads and the most amount of money spent. Why do they do that? I don't know. So we're not going to talk about that. But um, <laughs> realistically, they do give you all the options, all the, all the knobs and, uh, and, and things you can tweak in order to fix that. So if you do that and you do that well, and you spend time optimizing for getting those ratings, that will mm. give you an improvement when it comes to App Store optimization.